The IPM Innovation Lab is currently at the fifth year of the fourth phase. Each phase, of course, runs in five-year cycles. And in the first three phases, we have been five, you know, first three phases, we have been developing IPM components. And in the current phase, we started to work on develop, putting those components together for and making IPM packages. We are primarily working on high value vegetable crops. And currently, we are working in six different regions of the world. To borrow the phrase from Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, we work in the hot, flat, and crowded part of the world. And these are the six different regions. And we try to first regionalize these countries. So South Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, Central Asia, East Africa, and West Africa, we put them in a regional basis. And we will have annual meeting in each country. Like, for example, in South Asia, we will have annual meeting in Nepal for India and Bangladesh. And then the next year, we will have in Bangladesh for India and Nepal. That way, by rotating, we were able to get the scientists together and exchange information on integrated pest management. Then we now started to globalize our technologies because we have developed several technologies in this program. Uh, as I mentioned about the IPM package, we have developed many for many vegetable crops. Here I just give an example for tomato, and also I left some flyers outside on the tomato package, so you don't need to go through uh, reading this. And here I have listed about a dozen components that we have developed for IPM package. What I mean by IPM package is we have asked our scientists to come up with alternate technologies wherein pesticides need to be used for the problems that a farmer faces from the time of planting the seed up to the harvest. Whether it is a disease or insect, nematode, or whatever problem it is, we want to find out alternate technologies and integrate it. Of course, the package is not very, you know, it is very dynamic, it is not static. And, and now I'll go through some of the technologies that we developed and how we disseminated not only within the country and within the region, and also outside the region uh, on a global basis. For, uh, for example, eggplant uh, and tomato grafting. The, you know, the bacterial wilt is a soil-borne disease. It will kill the eggplant and tomatoes if we plant in the infected soil. For that, we came up with a technology of grafting on resistant rootstock. There are several wild eggplants that are resistant to you know, bacterial wilt. Similarly, use of trichoderma. It's an antagonistic fungus that's able to fight off some of the phytophagous fungus. So these are some of the technologies we have been globalizing. Well, coming to trichoderma, it has caught up very well in South Asia. In India, several companies produce trichoderma. There are over 100 different countries produce their in in, in, in Nepal also, there is a company that produces that is located in Chitwan, and they, they disseminate or they distribute this product all over Nepal. In Bangladesh, it is produced, you know, it's mixed with the compost, and it is produced by one of the companies over there and distributed throughout Bangladesh. Now, in Indonesia, the Bogar Agricultural University produces and distributes through, throughout, the, throughout the country. Now we are trying to introduce this technology to African countries. Well, this I mentioned earlier, like this slide was prepared about three years ago. At that time, there were about 86 companies producing trichoderma in India. Now probably there are about 120 or 125 companies doing this. And the other important one is in the, in the IPM package is the production uh, selection of virus-free seeds or disease-free seeds. We are planning to conduct a workshop on seed-borne virus diseases uh, in Kathmandu in, in, in next month. And also, we will conduct an international workshop on seed-borne diseases uh, of vegetables in Hyderabad, India, in June 2nd to 5th. Well, another thing we found that is important is to raising healthy seedlings. And here, this slide was taken in India, southern part of India. They use, whoops, sorry. They use a media known as the coconut pith or coconut dust that comes out of the husk as a medium for raising the seedlings. 
Of course, in the US and other developed countries, peat moss is used, but here it is coconut pit. 10, year, 10, 15 years ago, coconut pit used to be a problem because farmers didn't know what to do with it. They used to throw them all out because it would breed. It would breed the coconut rhinoceros beetle. About 10 years ago, they found that it is a very good medium for raising uh, seedlings. So now they export this sterile media all over the world. And I was talking with uh, Bill Collins, uh, see whether that technology could be introduced to Nepal. And in fact, we were thinking that well, coconut pith is not available in Nepal because it's not, it is a little bit far north and not very close to the ocean, so coconut doesn't grow well here. So we were thinking of maybe use rice husk or wheat husk, shred it, and then use as a medium. That needs to be tried. If it works, then you can produce very healthy seedlings. And raising this way also, it is very amenable for treating with Trichoderma pseudomonas or Bacillus subtilis. The, I mentioned about, before about grafting. This technology we introduced in Bangladesh about uh, 20 years ago. Now from there we were able to disseminate this technology to different parts of the world. Now recently we introduced it to Mali and Senegal. In fact, this technology got transferred from Uganda to Ohio in, about five years ago, and uh, they were able to get about $700,000 grant from USDA to spread this technology in Ohio and neighboring states. And we also you know, promote promotion uh, use of pheromones. There's a company in India at Bangalore. It produces pheromone for most of the important pests of tropical vegetable, tropical vegetable crops. And you can see here they use a pheromone trap in the onion field. In Bangladesh, they use the Kulur trap for controlling the melon fly. So there are, it is now quite, quite commonly used in the IPM program. Uh, here it is production of biological control agents. Uh, you know, I just took sli some slides from different parts of the world. And you know, here production of the parasites, this production of the nuclear polyhydrosis virus. These viruses are very specific to insects. And production of egg parasites as well as producers, insects, and mites. And also we encourage use of biopesticides. Here there is a biopesticide called Bowl Cure was prepared by one of our collaborators, the Energy Resources Institute in India, and they are marketing this product. This product was prepared out of eucalyptus leaves. And we are also planning to conduct a biopesticides workshop in Kathmandu or Chitwan you know, sometime in May or June. Originally we planned to conduct this workshop in India actually next week. But the uh, government of India said we had to get the permission and all kinds of other bureaucratic uh, stuff came through. So finally, we decided to ch you know, shift it to Nepal. Uh, then coming to virus, virus is a serious uh, problem in vegetable uh, crops. So there is a virus called peanut bud necrosis virus. It attacks tomatoes too in addition to uh, peanuts. But in southern part of India, it is a very serious problem. It almost causes about 50 to 60 percent of crop loss. And if you go to the market and look at the sorry, look at the fruits, you will see this kind of symptoms in the market. That means already they lost more than 50 percent. This is only the remaining out of the remaining 50 percent that shows up in the market. It also doesn't have very good keeping quality. So we introduced a technique called roguing, droging in the nursery itself. And that technique seemed to work fairly well. It's a viral trips transmitted TASPA virus. Well, we, you know, the, so far I talked about some of the problems that are already existing in these countries and how we are helping these countries to tackle these problems. One minute, okay. Uh, we also address some of the invasive species. Papaya millibug is originally from the in, in, in Mexico, and it got introduced to. Uh, the Caribbean and then to the Pacific and then to Asia. Now it is uh, in West Africa. And when it came to India, we introduced this parasite from Mexico and able to control this pest. The benefit, uh, according to our uh, economists, as it has been about 500 million to 1.37 billion. By controlling this pest in south southern India, we were able to prevent its migration to Nepal. Well, I'm not going to run that. Uh, video uh, because of short of time. There are several invasive species we are monitoring. One is cassava millibug. 
It, it, it got introduced to Africa in the 1980s. Now it is in Indonesia and the Southeast Asia. So we, we are working with the SEAT, see whether we can start a biological control program in Indonesia. And also there is another uh, insect known as Tuta absoluta. It is the South American uh, tomato leaf miner. It got introduced to Spain in 2006. Now it covered all of uh, Europe and also reached <laughs> Also, it reached uh, uh, Afghanistan now. In another year or two, I expect it to be in India and Nepal. Uh, we are also working with the groundnut or the peanut uh, innovation lab and in we're trying to control the peanut or groundnut leaf miner in East Africa. Well, this is the Tuta absoluta migration. It, is, it has been coming very, very close to India now. It is currently in the Afghanistan area. And we are also working on parthenium weed. It is a neotropical weed, got introduced to Australia, India, and then to Eastern Africa. Now we have a very good program on biological control of this weed in, one second, uh, in, in Ethiopia. We did quite a bit of capacity building over there. Not only we built a, a world-class quarantine facility, and also we trained several scientists and technicians over there, and they are capable of handling the research that involved in biological control. Well, this, uh, this will be the last slide. Uh, you know, Jeff yesterday showed this slide. We have done uh, impact analysis of several of our uh, technologies that we introduced in different parts of the world. And the total comes to, uh, out of the 10 technologies, the total comes to about 784 million to $1.8 billion. And we, exp you know, we estimate that IPM Innovation Lab has been funded about $550 million in the last 20 years, and the cost-benefit ratio is almost uh, $15 to $35 for each dollar spent just for the 10 technologies alone. If you analyze all the technologies, uh, my estimate is the benefit will go anywhere from $150 to $300 for each dollar spent. Thanks. Thank you. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org and feedthefuture.gov.